John Lusk here of Lusk Archery Adventures, series testing, successful hunting. Today I'm going to be testing another head by NAP. It's a classic, the Hellraiser. I've got a lot of requests to test this head, so I went ahead and ordered a pack, and I'm going to put it to the test here today. And I'm going to be using my uh, regimen for 2024. For a detailed description of that, please watch the video, uh, 2024 Broadhead Test Process. That's what it's called, and it'll explain all the tests I do, why I do them, how I do them, how the scoring works, and so forth. And it'll save me time to not have to go into all that in each and every video. And then for uh, for the shooting, for most of the shooting, I'm using for my compound bow this year, the, uh, the Elite Era. And then for the flight testing, I'm going to be using this crossbow, the Killer Instinct SWAT X1. And then I'm using uh, Bishop Arrows. I'm using the FOC King for most of the shots. The Fat Eliminator when I shoot something into concrete because they can handle it. And then I'm using for a bolt this Bishop Goat. Okay, <laughs> there's a really impressive crossbow bolt. So uh, let's zoom on in here and go through some of the design features and specifications and then put this head to the test. So here's a good look at this classic head. Been around for a while, and there's quite a few other heads that are similar to it on the market. Just a one-piece, three-blade, all-steel construction broadhead. So again, all steel. In terms of the dimensions, you've got one and one-eighth inch cutting diameter, which most of these heads are, are similar in that way. Um, the total length that's exposed beyond the end of the arrow is 1.4 inches and the blades are 0.038 inches thick. And you can notice here that it has welds that hold together. So it's like it's one piece, but it's not machined out of a single chunk of steel. You can see it's like a component head that's been welded there at the base as well as up here. Got a pretty thin ferrule. Um, just to cut back on weight. Not sure how durable it's going to be. We'll have to see how durable those welds are. It's got a pyramid tip just to give it a little more durability at the end and prevent rollover because it does come to a really nice point right there. Uh, as for resharpening, this is one of those uh, heads that you can just lay flat. Okay, you just lay it flat on any stone and you can sharpen. I like to use the Stay Sharp Guide um, diamond plate to do that. Or if you want to get it extra sharp, use the Stay Sharp Guide 344, which changes this bevel from 60 degrees to 44 degrees and takes a little while to do it, but it's kind of fun to do it, and man, it makes it quite a bit sharper, okay? Every head I've done that with, it uh, it comes out quite a bit sharper, so that's something worth considering uh, in that way for resharpening. But really an uh, interesting head, eager to put it to the test and see how it performs. The Hellraiser got the nine ring. It took 435 grams of force to cut through the wire, which is a 7.65 on a 10 point scale. It penetrated eight and three quarter inches. It took an additional 62 grams of force to cut through the wire, which is an 8.76 on a 10 point scale. It penetrated through 54 layers. It's in perfect condition after the three shots through the MDF. And it's still in really good shape after the two shots through the seal plate. The only damage was that the tip got a little bit blunted, but other than that, did very well. Here's the Hellraiser after all the durability testing, and man, it did a lot better than I expected. I knew it was going to do well through the MDF, um, then it surprised me a bit. It did uh, really well through the steel plate, the tip got a little bit blunted, and then into the concrete, um, it did way better than I thought. I thought those welds wouldn't hold up. It got a bit of a bend there, you can see that tip 
got a, a bit of a roll over there, but overall still spins pretty well and definitely held together. So what do you think of the Hellraiser? Man, it exceeded my expectations, okay? I, when I've tested, like, um, all steel welded parts before, I, you know, I've had some, some not-so-good things happen. But, man, this had performed really well across the board. The only big weaknesses were that the sharpness, which, you know, you can remedy that really easy just by sharpening it yourself, and then the cut size. And that's not its fault, okay? It's just got a, a smaller cut, and I score the total cut because that affects lethality and bloodletting and so forth. But if that doesn't matter to you or you're going after a bigger, bigger animal or have a lighter setup, up, it's really something worth checking out. So you look over the score sheet and see how it performed in the areas that matter to you the most and see if this might be a good fit for you. And uh, stay tuned for the overall cumulative score as well as the corresponding Lusk grade and the list of all the discount codes that I have so far. So far, I'm trying to get more so I can just pass on savings to you.